So today, today is the day. It's been said before that being an editor is a thankless job because when you do it right, no one is supposed to notice. I think this idea goes for Casey Neistat's daily vlog 100%. When Neistat succeeds, all you should see is the fun. Though there are plenty of imitators, I think it's pretty much impossible to duplicate the style of Casey Neistat. I think that style is worth taking a closer look at because along with various other interesting subgenres like what we're trying to do with video essays, the daily vlog, particularly what Neistat has done to it, has grown organically and uniquely out of the medium where it lives, online video. You guys shouldn't let people do that. The inner vitality of Neistat's show is undeniable. That's down to his personality, his worldview, his insane work ethic, even his recklessness. But I think the craft that supports these things goes largely unnoticed. See, Neistat's revolutionary move was bringing more than a decade of videographic experience to a subgenre that prizes amateur craft. Daily vlogs need a dose or a feeling of amateurism because what makes them valuable is how real they seem. In an age where reality TV was dominated by Jersey Shore and the hills where scenes were prompted by the suggestions of producers, if not completely scripted. I don't care about anything else but me and Gianni smushing. Daily vlogs are the response, a real slice of life with no corporate mediator. And the signature of something that's not corporate is a lack of polish, a product that passes through the hands of only one person before it was delivered to an audience. No audio touch-ups, no color correction, no notes from a distant boardroom. Nice that elevated that amateur spirit to an art. And I say spirit because nothing of what he does is actually amateurish. When it comes to this vlog, and, and YouTube in general, I was trying to find opportunities to up my game when it comes to production value. Neistat has been slowly developing his style from the start. In 2003, he and his brother made a short film called iPod's Dirty Secret about the crappiness of iPod batteries that collected over a million views in six weeks in the era before YouTube. A hybrid combination of gonzo journalism, guerrilla filmmaking, and cinema verite, this signature evolved across a number of short movies and eventually found its way into the vlog, for which it's a perfect match. In Cinema Verite, the camera is often acknowledged, made a part of the product. Neistat takes this to another level by making his massive collection of camera equipment and his studio another character in his show. DSLRs, GoPros, power shots, 360s, iPhones, drones, each camera and each lens has its own personality, and Neistat's constantly swapping them around. But it goes further than this. Neistat keeps all his old footage, routinely working in mini-DV memories, VHS tapes, and other first-generation video camera clips. Within this universe, old video camera footage doesn't look dated. It's just another strata in the ongoing story of the democratization of filmmaking, a story that parallels our lives. His main rig, however, is this, a Canon 70D on a gorilla pod. I mean, this tells you everything you need to know about Neistat as a filmmaker. This is a heavy thing to carry all day. Daily vloggers before this may do with handhelds of varying sizes, power shots, small enough to fit in your pocket. The idea was that it was always with you, unobtrusive. Neistat has a slightly different MO. He wants his show to feel natural, not be natural. My goal with this vlog isn't, and it has never been, to like share all the intimacies of my life, it's always just been to create a good or entertaining piece of content every day. And so to up his production value takes a million little things like setting a camera down, framing a shot, then running back out of frame to come into frame again, like the shot I showed at the beginning of this video. Like going out at sunset and waiting 30 minutes while three different cameras take three different time lapses. Like carrying a 70D on a gorilla pod all day. Like carrying a 70D and a gorilla pod and a boosted board controller all in the same hand just to look natural. I'm trying to teach Sean how to ride the boosted board, record with a video camera, and drink a smoothie at the same time. How's it going, Sean? I don't know how do you do this, and you have a... Uh, man. 
the effortlessness of Casey Neistat's vlog is an illusion. The next time you watch one, just pay more attention to his camera setups. Notice how things are framed. Notice how his time lapses always feature some sort of large movement. Notice how edits through action feel so smooth, and then think about what actually was happening there. There are a lot of things on YouTube, but only a few of them are legitimately something new under the sun. These new styles, cultivated not from film or TV, but out of how we watch and share, specifically online video, have to be acknowledged and studied and celebrated if we want this medium to be recognized as something other than the stepchild of older formats. I get a thrill watching Neistat's work. I'm motivated by it, by the art that's in it, and how wonderfully invisible it can be. It's a style you can't duplicate because the show is animated and held together by his energy. But that ought to be encouraging, because it means that in the age of online video, when a creation can be the unmediated vision of its creator, there's a style within all of us, and there are literally millions of people waiting for you to find it. Yes, I'm starting a proper daily vlog. I'm psyched.